Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The U.S. Navy as we know it today was modernized in 1880, from the Old Navy to the New Navy as we know it today. The United States Navy operates at least 450 ships that require underway replenishment, or UNREP. The process was developed to replenish and refuel up to two U.S. Navy ships simultaneously anywhere in the world. The process has been chosen from many previous ideas and has stood the test of time. But it is not as straightforward as it may seem. The process is initiated by firing a shot line across from the replenishment vessel to the receiving ship. Unless the receiving ship has aircraft, then the process is reversed. The shot line is fired using a modified M14 rifle. From the shot line, the messenger line is pulled across by all available sailors. The messenger line deployment is the most labor-intensive part of the operation. Ships use fuel hoses, cargo rigs, or alongside replenishment rigs to transfer fuel, cargo, or other supplies while maintaining close proximity to one another during CONREP. Depending on the size of the ships and the equipment being used, the space between them can vary from about 50 to 120 feet. During CONREP, or connected replenishment operations, the ships typically maintain a speed of 12 to 14 knots. The replenishment lines between the vessels consist of cables for transferring pallets of cargo, as well as stores and hoses for transferring fuel. CONREP is useful when the vessels are traveling at speed in waters that are not entirely safe. It is called connected replenishment because the vessels are connected to one another during the evolution. Evolution is the name used by the U.S. Navy to indicate any specific effort, such as underway replenishment. Pallets are used to transfer stores across from the replenishment vessel to the receiver. Pallets make controlling and transferring goods from one moving vessel to the other easier. By overseeing the inventory, storage, and distribution of supplies on the receiving ship, supply officers and logistics experts play a crucial part in unrep operations. To ensure proper documentation, accounting, and handling of the transferred items, they collaborate closely with replenishment control officers, or RCOs. When replenishment happens between three vessels, the process is called double unwrap. Once the stores have been transferred across, they are either moved to a central distribution area and then distributed, or taken directly to where they must be stored.
all available crew is used for this evolution. During low light evolutions or early morning unrep, all visible lights of the USS Nimitz are changed to red because the light is less visible for enemy vessels. The USS Nimitz requires no fuel, but does require aviation fuel, ordnance, and provisions. All lines, hoses, and personnel that are part of the evolution are marked with chem lights or light sticks to make them more visible. The replenishment vessel and aircraft carrier must maintain a constant spacing to avoid being sucked together by the water between them. Once all connections are established, the process will be started by the RCOs. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are able to be replenished in most weather conditions. Low visibility makes the process more difficult. Communication between the vessels is established using colored paddles. These are called visual signals. They are supplemented by means of voice communication. Sound signals, such as whistles, and by following standard operating procedures, or SOPs. Underwear replenishment is the primary method that we receive stores, uh, food, fuel, or anything else that we may need while at sea. It's what allows us to sustain ourselves to stay out to sea longer. During CONREP, Various lines are used to transfer stores. Fueling lines, also referred to as rigid lines, are used to move fuel between ships. Fueling stations are connected by flexible hoses, allowing movement while transferring fuel. Heavy lines and equipment are pulled between ships by hauling lines, also known as messenger lines, which facilitate the initial connection. Transfer lines are suspended between gantries by heavy-duty wires called span wires, which guarantee proper alignment and tension. Provisions, machinery, and supplies are transferred using cargo lines and hoses. Transferring lighter loads between ships is made possible by high lines, which are rigged above decks. During unwrap operations, these various lines and hoses are essential for facilitating the efficient and secure transfer of fuel, cargo, people, and supplies. The main hangar deck of the carrier serves as a staging area for various activities during unrep. Aircraft are typically removed from the hangar deck to make room for storing and organizing the tools, materials, and supplies needed for the replenishment operation. It turns into a busy center where personnel gather and prepare to transfer fuel, cargo, and supplies. Teams responsible for handling lines, hoses, and other equipment congregate and coordinate their efforts on the hangar deck. Emphasis is placed on safety precautions and practices to reduce risks during the operation. The movement of ammunition and ordnance is a significant operation in itself. The ordnance used by the U.S. Navy is both critical for all operations and heavier than similar sized volumes. Down. 
to ensure security and effectiveness, the movement of ordnance in the hangar bay is carefully controlled. The term ordnance describes the weapons carried on board, including ammunition, bombs, and missiles. The ordnance in the hangar bay is secured and stored in designated storage areas in preparation for unwrap. To avoid shifting or unintentional movement during the operation, the ordnance must be properly positioned and restrained. Ordnance handling officers and other qualified personnel closely monitor the movement of ordnance and guarantee that it is kept securely fastened throughout the operation. U.S. aircraft carriers have hangar bays. The main hangar bay is the largest enclosed space aboard the aircraft carrier and is, therefore, the perfect area for temporarily storing all transferred cargo. From here, the crew uses forklifts and other tools to transfer all stores to their final storage areas. Except for CONREP, helicopters can also be used. Vertical replenishment, or VERTREP, can be supplementary to CONREP or can be done on its own. The process of VERTREP is where helicopters are used to lift cargo vertically from the replenishment vessel and transfer it via cargo sling to the receiving vessel. During the process, the pilot is guided by both deck crews using hand signals and his flight engineer who gives him verbal guidance. The flight engineer ensures the hookup is done correctly and releases the load on the receiving vessel deck. The introduction of the MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft has introduced a new dimension of logistical support for the U.S. Navy. The Osprey is able to take off and land like a helicopter, but can perform horizontal flight at turboprop aircraft speeds. That means it can deliver cargo at ranges of 1,000 miles and greater. The U.S. Navy has been using the Osprey to take over the role of the C-2 Greyhound in delivering mail and personnel to carriers. But, more importantly, the Osprey is able to deliver cargo to U.S. ballistic missile submarines at sea. The Osprey is able to carry loads weighing up to 20,000 pounds of cargo internally. If required, it can transport 15,000 pounds externally through cargo slinging. It is able to use its rescue winch to lower cargo to the deck of the submarine. The cargo is lowered to the area marked on the narrow deck of the submarine. Once the cargo has been released, the submarine crew is able to collect the stores from the deck and transfer them inside. Other than the Osprey, the U.S. Navy can also use the Seahawk. The Seahawk is able to extend its VERTREP to include submarines at sea. Submarines like the USS Henry M. Jackson are restricted by the provisions they have aboard. The Osprey and Seahawk are limited in their resupply capabilities by their range. The C-17 Globemaster III is able to deliver supplies to almost any location where U.S. submarines are operating. The C-17 has a range of 2,780 miles, but that can be extended by means of aerial refueling. Contact with microphone. The position of the submarine is made known to the C-17, which confirms the submarine's identity. The crew flies over the drop zone, or DZ, and drops the cargo utilizing a cargo parachute system. 
the cargo splashes down in the ocean. The submarine makes a course correction and picks up the cargo. Despite having to patrol the width and breadth of the world's oceans, the U.S. Navy is able to resupply itself. It can do this under almost all weather conditions while traveling at speed. Not only can it resupply surface vessels, but it can also provide provisions to submarines at sea. With its ability to perform underway replenishment, the U.S. Navy can go wherever it is needed globally. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.